The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 83. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of courageous women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Want to learn how you can change your inner beliefs and attitudes? Download a free copy of the ebook by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal woman on today. She is a speaker, writer, life coach, author, and, you know, there's a book coming out that, you know, she actually included me in as well, you know, helping women find their power, find their, their strength to do what they want to be the woman that they're supposed to be. So, I can't wait till this book comes out. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Sharon Jameson. Sharon, how are you doing today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Thanks so much for the opportunity first, Sheena. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Yes, I uh, am a life coach and author. I have two books already out. One book is called I Can Depend on Me that talks about my journey to wholeness and my journey to my own self-confidence and power. And I have another book called I Have Learned a Few Things. And that book, uh, it's from coaching other people and sharing some of their truths and some of their perspectives that have helped them live lives of abundance, financial, emotional, spiritual abundance. So I'm really excited about those books. And I'm excited about a book that's coming out on January the 10th. The Strength of My Soul, Stories of Sisterhood, Triumph, and Inspiration. So I'm just excited that we have found each other, Sheena, and I'm so excited that you are giving me an opportunity to share on your platform. So thank you so much for that. No problem. It's a pleasure having you on and sharing your wisdom to our listeners. I'm sure they can get something out of your story and be able to just start taking action in their own lives. So, So Sharon, what's your cultural background? I am African-American and originally from Missouri, uh, which is in the middle of the United States. And now I live in Georgia and I have lived all over the world. So my background is African-American, but I would say I am, I would not say that I ascribe to any one way of being in the world. I, I embrace all cultures, all orientations, all people. And so that's how I like to define myself. Awesome. I love that. (laughs) And, you know, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is I am. Just those two words, I am. And I use those two words because many times I think as women, we are so inclined to say who we are not and what we cannot do that we forget to remind ourselves that we are power. So I tell myself, I am beautiful, I am bold, I am creative, I am, I am. And I use that as a source of affirmation and a source to assure myself of that I am who I say I am. And I am the one who gives breath to my being. And so I love to uh, say I am and, and just fill in the blank because that's what gives me power. I love that, you know, just two simple words that are so powerful and I think sometimes we take that for granted because we focus on who we are not when we re- we really should focus on who we are. You know, if it's I am beautiful, you know, I am strong, I am courageous. You know, these are such powerful words that can really start telling your brain who you really are. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? That's a good question. And I think that self-confidence is the ability uh, to follow your own conscience and not to follow the crowd. And I think it's ability to to follow your own conscience from a place of knowing who you are and a place of defining who you are and affirming yourself. And I think that self-confidence helps you stand alone when you are different. Are stand alone when you don't condone the actions or beliefs of others. So I think that self confidence is progressive. I think we acquire it little by little when we learn to trust our own selves and to trust our own souls. And I think self confidence is one of the biggest gifts that we can give ourselves so that we can live lives of abundance and prosperity. So uh, self confidence is, is many things, but I, uh, but I would say it's the ability to listen to yourself and to know your truth and to follow your truth 
even when your truth is not accepted or endorsed by others. So to me, that's self-confidence. I love it. And it's so true. It's just, you know, being your true self and not really caring, you know, what others think, not following the crowd, because sometimes it's so easy to follow the crowd. But, you know, we lose ourselves in the process when we do that. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? My life was a variety of many things, Sheena. And I grew up at a time where schools were still being integrated. And I was the only black child in an all-white school. And I started school, kindergarten, feeling really good about who I was. And I thought I was beautiful and smart and and fun and everything a five-year-old kid should feel about themselves. But what happened is that I went to a school who did not really accept black people. And I was fed a lot of bad messages about who I was. I was told that I was ugly and stupid and limited and less than and called all types of horrific names. And those negative experiences start to make me doubt who I was. And I, for a while, I did not have self-confidence because I didn't like who I was. And I was very tentative. But when I really started understanding who I was and not conforming to society standards or society's pejorative pronouncements about who I was because of my race or my culture or my gender, I was able to really understand and start developing my self-confidence. Now, it was a process. It didn't happen overnight. But when I felt that the only person I had to love the most was me and to understand that I was valued just because I was breathing. That was the the start of my self-confidence. But my self-confidence was just a bud at that time. But it has grown in my 20s and my 30s and my 40s. And now as I enter a new decade of my life, I'm very confident. But it was those sense of struggle that really helped me understand how brave I was and how courageous I was and how talented I was that really poured and helped me develop myself sense of self and as a result, my self-confidence. So it was, it was definitely a, a journey and it was a process that happened uh, slowly but surely. And I'm really so proud of my journey and proud that I use my journey to help other women today. That's awesome. And, you know, you mentioned back then, you know, you, you integrated schools just started and, you know, people were picking on you because of, you know, who you were back then. And what was that aha moment when you realized you were just more than enough? You didn't have to, it didn't matter if people, you know, put you down. You knew you were more than enough to just stand alone and be able to do the things that you wanted to do. Ashina, I think I, I had to hit rock bottom um, because of all of the pejorative and derogatory things that I believed about myself. I became very depressed and I suffered from debilitating depression for years because, you know, negativity is really a constant assault on your soul. But when I started through help of therapy, started to learn um, and to, to define myself and to learn that I was worthy and that I was beautiful and all those things that people told me that I were I was not. That was my aha moment. And that was when I said that I could either live in this abyss or I, I can die in this abyss or live. And I started living and, and it was a slowly living process when I had to relearn to live because I had to reimagine myself and reevaluate myself and rebuild myself. But my aha moment was that I had a choice. I can be bitter and sad and depressed and lonely or I can use all the pain from my past and use it to help me be powerful and to accept who I was and to love who I was. So it, that was the aha moment. It was really emotional death in, in our prosperity. And I had to make a decision. But it's, I had to hit rock bottom. And I hit rock bottom and, and dealt with depression in ways that w- were really damaging to my, my sense of self and my soul. But I, I made a choice. I made a choice. It was depression or live. And I chose to live. I love that. You know, so many people don't realize they, they have the ability to make a choice in life, whether to be happy or to be sad. And it takes the same amount of energy to do that, right? I mean, you know, it just takes one decision, one choice, and just keep on acting on it until we get to that destiny or that destination we want to be in. So I'm glad you were able to make that choice. And what's your life now after that? I would say, I just want to say something, um, make a comment to what you said. It is a choice. But sometimes I want to say that people 
even though they make the choice on their own, sometimes they can't take the journey by themselves. And sometimes that after they make the choice that I want to be better, sometimes they have to reach out to others and to help them walk through those dark spaces in their lives so that they can arrive at a place of empowerment and at, and at a place of light. And so you're right. I agree with you. It's a choice. But then the choice is individual. But sometimes the journey is collective for us to get to um, our designated position uh, of peace. So what is my life like now is that I really don't play to the crowd. I let myself be authentic and to be different. I don't try to confine myself to any one way of being. I never really care about what society says and how, or how society defines me. And I'm okay with understanding that I'm a misfit, meaning that I don't fit in anybody's class, culture, gender, whatever n- narratives. I develop and define my own narratives because I am the one who says who I am. And, and so that's what my life is like now. I have a sense of peace. I have a sense of happiness. I, I have a sense of clarity. But that all came at a price of investing in health because I think sometimes therapy is our passage, our pathway to health. And I use every resource that I had to get to this place. And and so after my discovery that I am powerful, it's really been a life uh, of of abundance and a life of clarity and a life of creativity that I'm so happy to share with others also. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love that you said you're a misfit. (laughs) Some people see it as a bad thing, but you know, it's good being able to just stand alone and not give a damn what the crowd thinks of you, right? I mean, that's the most, I think that's the most freest and most powerful thing ever. You just, you're free from what others think of you. And it's such a great feeling. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that's how you feel, but I mean, it's just like, you don't have to worry about what people think. And if they don't like you, then too bad. Right. So thanks for yes. sharing that. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, to the person who's listening to this episode, she's also on her own journey to self-confidence. What would be your uh, one tip you would give to that person? My one tip would be get to know the real you, the real you, the real you without your titles, without your money, without your position, without everybody else's expectations and needs, without society says who you are. Get to know the real you because it is that knowing of who you are that gives you the power and that power to be yourself and that power to be yourself is what gives you self-confidence. So get to know the real you, the emotionally, spiritually, butt naked you. And that's where you get your power from and so that you can live and navigate in a world from a place of peace. So that's my one tip. Get to know the real you. And also I want to say this, Sheena, knowing the real you may take time because we have to shed all the messages and shed all all the expectations and shed everything that somebody else wants us to be and that takes us it takes time to get to know the real you so to get to know to know the real you and know that at knowing the real you might take time and and to invest in the time because once you know who you are nobody can tell you who you are not and i think that's one of the, the biggest gifts we can give to ourselves I love it. Thanks for sharing that. I like when you said get to know the real you, the real butt naked you. I think that's that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and Sharon, you know, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and the things that you do and the books that you write, is there any social media profiles or any websites that we can connect with? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for letting me share that, Sheena. Yes, um, I have a, my website is www.sharonjameson.com and my name is spelled S H A. R R O N J A M I S O N Sharon Jameson.com. That's my website. They can also connect with me on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram at Sharon Jameson. Everything's my name. And when our book comes out, that where the book that you and I be co authors, yay, Shana, that, that book is called The Strength of My Soul. And so they can connect with me. Uh, on the my soul.com and that website will be up shortly. So those are the ways that they can connect with me and I hope people will connect with me and I will promise and promise to connect with them back because I love to hear from people and I love to hear their stories and I like to share my stories with people also. So thank you so much for letting me share that, uh, Sheena. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for sharing all, all your information. I'm sure the listeners would love to check out, especially the new book that's coming out in January. Can't wait for that. You know, it's the first time I've ever written for a published book. So, you know, I, I really appreciate that opportunity. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Sharon, just head on over to the Tao of Self-Confidence.com and search for Sharon's name. Her show notes will pop up. 
And I just want to thank Sharon for sharing her journey with us and sharing her story. So, Sharon, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much, too, for your for giving me an opportunity to share. And I, I want to tell people, I am so impressed by who you are, Sheena. I read your posts and I read your email that you sent to me. And you are you're so motivating and you inspire me. So thank you so much for being a source of, de- um, of daily inspiration. I look forward to your emails every morning. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. No problem. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Women's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit the Tao of Self-Confidence.com for links to everything we chatted about today, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more. Subscribe to the Tao of Self-Confidence on iTunes or Stitcher to hear more stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence.